In today's interview, I spoke to six-figure YouTuber Cassidy Tuttle and learned about her $20 million YouTube strategy. If you're interested in making lots of money by selling your own products through YouTube, Cassidy's channel, Succulents and Sunshine, is the perfect example of how you can do that. In the upcoming chat, Cassidy reveals how she turned her YouTube channel into an automated everlasting selling system and how she created her newest product that she believes could make her $20 million. It was a really interesting, informative chat. So watch and listen closely, you're gonna learn a lot. Cassidy, thanks so much for doing this. It's great to have you here. Thank you, it's good to be here. Do you wanna just run through all of the revenue streams that you've built up around the um, Succulents and Sunshine YouTube channel? Yeah, so all of this kind of started with the blog initially. So um, through the blog, we have ad revenue. We have an ad network that we work with that handles all the display ads. And then we also have affiliate marketing we sell our own digital products, so ebooks, courses, and digital downloads, just a little different than an ebook. And then we also have YouTube ads. We have an app that we've created. And then we recently released a line of physical products that we're producing ourselves. And so that's been our latest uh, experiment, if you will. And I also produced or published a traditional book. So a very small amount of royalties coming in from that. And then I also do coaching to help other bloggers make more money. I think that's all of them. So, but the first year we started, we made about 10 grand. The next year was about 20. Next year was about 50. And wow. then the fourth year is when we hit just over a hundred thousand. And it has not doubled since then each year, but it has gone <laughs> up. Yeah. Generally speaking, year over year. Do you think you can give us a, a breakdown in kind of what contributes highest and lowest in earnings? Yeah. So um, I would say very consistently, especially if you average it out through the year. Average for the year, I would say 40% of our income is sales of our own products. About 40% like our courses, ebooks, um, and I guess now the physical products go into that. Uh -huh. And then it's a pretty even split for the other 60, about 30 ads and 30 affiliates. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's what I expected. I think uh, there comes a point where to really excel and grow with your um, your content business, ad revenue really needs to become the smaller uh, percentage of, of, of your earnings, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. And I see that um, a lot of my blogging clients, that's where they're at. They're making a ton of money with ads, but you can only like i don't know content gets you so far and then like if if ad revenue drops you're at the mercy of you know the advertisers whereas it's fairly simple to integrate your own product and have it be as consistent as ads so i think that's one of the things people worry about it's like well if it's my own product i have to be constantly promoting and constantly promoting but most of our product sales are kind of on autopilot it's all through just a a really basic funnel that we have set up so that comes in regularly but then we have the option to run promotions or do extra marketing to boost it and those months when we're running promotions like it blows ads way out of the water it's like eh, okay it's nice to get that ad check but this is really where the money is made is in selling your own products okay so promotions is the key to like real high revenue months Yes, at yeah. least for us, that's how it is. <laughs> you mentioned your funnel there. How does that factor into everything else that you do? Like what's the what's the journey someone will take through your funnel? Yeah, so that's actually a big part of how we make sales through YouTube is through our email funnel. Um, so whether you come to the blog or you're on the YouTube channel, the next step essentially that we want you to take is to sign up for the email list. And the great thing with that is you get really focused tips on how to care for succulents. So we've compiled the most important things that we think you need to know combined with what our audience says they want to know cool. into an email series. And then as part of that, we have our products really integrated with it. So when you sign up for that email series on the thank you page, it'll say, hey, your email's coming soon. And then by the way, we have these ID cards that will help you understand the individual needs of your plants. The emails are going to tell you all about like a general care, but each succulent's a little bit different. So, you know, check out these ID cards to learn how to, the, the nuances of those individual succulents. And that, um, that product is incorporated to the next five emails that we send. 
And then Got after it. those five emails, then they will get an actual sales email for the cards if they haven't already purchased. Um, and then after that, they go into another kind of content series. And then eventually they'll also get um, like a full sales email series for our course, which is a lot higher ticket. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like is email your big, biggest sales driver. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's tricky because it definitely is. But then all of these organic sources like YouTube and the blog are where we get those email subscribers. So everything kind of plays its, its role in the ecosystem. But email is definitely where we're generating the most of our product sales. The thing that I love about email, obviously, there's people that aren't going to sign up. But email is a great way to reach people who want all different kinds of content. Right. So you can you can send them to products that you sell, but you can also send them back to your YouTube channel and help boost your initial um, video views. You know, when you first launch a video. So there's there's just so many things that you can do sure. with the email list that um, can benefit your business without necessarily selling to your email subscriber. Although you should do that, too. But. Yeah, I used to work in email marketing before I became a YouTuber. Um, so I love this oh, stuff. Yeah. Like I geek out over email and yeah, I'm a big supporter of like the power of email. So it's cool to speak to someone that has similar like buy into it than I do. And then you made the decision to start a physical product. Do you want to maybe just uh, tell, give the audience a rundown on, on what Snappy Pots is and uh, yeah, just uh, fill us in on, on that project? Yeah. So this kind of came in conjunction with the app that we sell, but I had a bunch of succulents in pots that were identical. So I had the same type of succulent planted in the same type of pot. And I needed some sort of like marker or way to identify which one was which. And so I was like sticking random things on the top of the pots. And that worked. But then I was talking with my assistant and I'm like, oh, it'd be cool. Like we had thought about like 3D printing little shapes that we could like stick in, you know, like a garden steak kind of thing. And like, yeah, but it kind of could cut the roots. Not that it's going to cause a lot of damage. And anyway, eventually, as we were talking, I was like, oh, my gosh, what if we could design a pot where we could put the decorations on the pot instead of on the like, plant or in the plant? And so that's where this concept of Snappy Pots was born. Basically, they're a pot. Um, we've designed the scale and shape of them to work really well for succulents, but they do work for any indoor house plant that is small. And um, the outside of the pots has holes on them, I guess, for the, for the YouTubers. This is what oh, they look like. Here we go. Yeah. Like. There's one in action. And so you can um, remove the little pieces and swap them out as often as you want. And it's easier awesome. when you're actually looking at it. But, um, but yeah, so it's just a really simple way to change up your decorations, change what your pot looks like, dress up your succulent, if you will. Everything is made in-house. We have anywhere from eight to 10 3D printers that are running at any given time. Wow. Um, sometimes more full-time than others, uh, like we're prepping for Halloween right now. We knew that, for example, we knew that there were not very many pots that were available online that were shallow and wide and relatively small. So most of the um, most of the pots that you can buy, like on Amazon or these online shops, they're kind of a tall cylinder mm -hmm. and they have a very small drainage hole. And it's not the ideal shape for growing succulents. So with snappy pots, we wanted them to be stubbier, you know, kind of short and wide. Sure. And then they have, I don't know if they have one, they have a fairly large um, drainage hole in the bottom oh, nice. too. And really weird things. I like to plug the drainage hole when I'm watering. So the drainage hole is perfectly sized for an average finger to be able to block <laughs> it. There's, um, and then other things like I personally don't like pots that have a drainage tray attached to them. And most of our audience feels similarly, but we like having the drainage tray. So we made them um, wow. separatable. So it's, it was a lot of just knowing what my audience wanted and then what I personally wanted. There's so much of this is like, I want this for me. This is what I want for my plants. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, I don't know, it's kind of cool. I feel like all of these things that I've learned in my business over the last few years have kind of culminated in Snappy Pots. Sure. I'm still reminded why we do digital products, though, as our main <laughs> thing. There's a lot less uh, moving parts with it, figuratively and literally. Sure. But it's it's been so fun and so this is what i currently consider like my side hustle yeah 
Well, I mean, first, can we see it again? First off, I think it looks awesome. Um, do yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, it, it looks great. And um, yeah. like, there's a lot to unpack there. It sounds like a lot's gone into getting like to where you are now with the products. Um, you know, you covered the problems that you were looking to solve. Uh, so the size, not finding many sort of um, short and wide pots only normally coming across tall and slim, um, the size of the drainage hole. And a lot of those problems you clearly are aware of because you're just in this world and this is what you do day in, day out. And you have this interaction with your audience from being a content creator that you can understand exactly the pain points that your audience face. Um, it's really great. I, I think it really symbolizes like how well equipped creators are to make products and become entrepreneurs moving forwards because they have all of these advantages and these, and these benefits. Um, and, and one of the amazing thing, you know, we're seeing more and more people start brands where they are just building content and brands around their passion. And they're so in that world, whereas compared to a generic uh, 3D printing um, company that decides to get into pots, you know, you have that experience and that insight from doing this for, for a decade. Um, so it's really cool to see all of that come together and to get to where you are now. Yeah. Have you got um, goals for where Snappy Bots goes in the future? Maybe numbers or, or targets you're trying to hit? Well, it's funny you say that. The, um, it was actually a woman that came up with the idea for the called gibbets, the little decorations that go in Crocs. And I believe she sold it to Crocs for $20 million. And so ever since then, like, that number has been stuck in my head. I'm like, yeah, that would be really awesome to, uh -huh. you know, find some big corporation to sell it to. And, um, but it's interesting. It's been, we kind of go back and forth. I feel like Snappy Pots is there when I want to work on it, but I haven't put so much pressure on it that like it has to be performing by this amount by this time. Sure. Um, part of that's just a personality thing. I know that if I am kind of, forced into a corner with something, I lose my enjoyment with it. But ultimately within the next year or two years, I would like to see it to a point where we're selling enough that we either have someone, um, like we have like an office space or warehouse space where someone else is managing the 3D printing and the fulfillment and inventory and all of that, or getting it to a point where um, it could be sold or it could be licensed to someone else. Mm -hmm. It's and it's hard because in the moment I'm like, but it's so fun. <laughs> um, but it is enough work that and doesn't quite align with my overall passive income goal. Sure. So eventually I do. I would like to see it put into more a passive perspective in terms of where I stand. You know, have, whether that's, like I said, hiring someone to run a 3D print farm or actually selling it, licensing it to someone else. I love that you're thinking big with this, you know, that you've you've made a physical product, but with that, you've also thought about getting the patent in. So you have complete ownership of that originality and you are thinking long-term with licensing deals and um, eventually handing over the hard work to someone else and, and reaping the benefits as the original creator. Um, it's awesome. I think there's two types of creators. You've got like just hobbyists, enthusiastic creators who are more sort of they're just passionate about the topic and the art form, but they don't really consider the the other side of things, the, the business and the marketing side of things. But it's clear that you are both a creator and entrepreneur and you're thinking with both hats. And there's a really sort of like beautiful uh, combination of those two skill sets um, when, when done well. And I think you're the perfect embodiment of that. So yeah, really cool to hear what you've got planned. Thank you. Final question before I let you go. Um, creating this physical product over the last year or so, what's been your biggest challenge? <laughs> um, it may be an obvious one, but the biggest challenge has been wearing all the hats, like doing all the things. And it's not even quite that, but like actually being okay with letting other people take on different aspects of it. Um, frankly, it's something I'm still working through which ironically, that's something I've been pretty good at with Succulents and Sunshine is I figure it out, I know what I want, and then I pass it on. And that has been a much bigger challenge with Snappy Pots. I think part of it is because I, I don't know exactly where it's going. We, we're still in the like figuring out phase with it of, okay, what are the processes? What do these things look like? 
Um, but I do know that it's problematic in that it prevents me from doing other things that might be more um, lucrative in the short term and long term. But yeah, slowly passing off things that are normally my thing. So it's, I do feel like I'm going back to the very beginning of the business. I'm like, I know I should be outsourcing this. I yeah. know my time it should not be here. But um, yeah, it's been hard to, to pass things off um, and, and kind of figure out, is, am I hesitant in passing this off because I don't even know what it looks like or do I not want to let it go? Mm. Um, yeah, so it's, um, yeah, that's figuring out how to manage all the things and know when to pass on yeah. different tasks. That I mean, it's, a, it's such an easy thing to do, isn't it? Like these projects are like your your babies, your creations and, and letting them go and let other people manage them and take control of them is can be difficult to do i've definitely fallen victim to that uh, that struggle of handing things out off in the past um, so i think there's gonna be a lot of people watching this can relate, that can relate to that for sure awesome wow uh this has been amazing i'm you've actually really motivated me like just hearing about all the wins you've had and how you've like scaled up year on year and the infrastructure you've built beneath your content um i'm thinking now i need to pick up the slack and <laughs> tighten things up in my business so um yeah i really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and i'm sure my audience is going to really value um this time that you've shared with us so yeah i'll just finish off by saying thanks for your time and it's been really enjoyable thanks Cassidy. thank you it's been fun for me as well